honestly, I forgot the opening title credit sequence after watching the movie, but I just remember watching the title credit sequence and being pissed off because I'm yeah. like, this is giving away the whole movie. Like, you know. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Drive by Movies here. My name is James. My name is Blaze. And never have I ever seen the 2003 horror classic, maybe cult classic, Wrong Turn. Baby, seriously, this isn't funny. This horror classic is about Chris and a group of five friends that are left stranded deep in the middle of the woods after their cars collide. As they venture deeper into the woods, they face an uncertain and blood curdling fate. So wrong turn. Is it a classic? I don't know if we hold that answer. <laughs> I felt like it followed a lot of classic tropes, some of which are probably from films that I hadn't seen before, so it might have felt more like a classic. Uh, but we're not here to talk about what I thought of this film. I think I had seen this film actually before, I'm pretty sure, so this is my second time seeing it. So your first time, James, this is Never Have Ever. What'd you think of Wrong Turn? Yeah, so I mean, I guess why we're checking it out is because it's classic enough to where it got a reboot remake that literally came out this past week. And, uh, you know, tune in next week on our new episode of Fresh Releases because we're going to be checking out Wrong Turn. So, you know, I wanted to see the original. I know it has multiple direct to video like sequels and stuff. Um, uh, I really love Adam Green and Joe Lynch. Like, uh, if you haven't checked out their movie clip podcast, it's pretty fun and stuff. Like, well, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of like all their movies and stuff. They're just really fun horror guys. Like, they really appreciate the genre and stuff. And I really enjoyed Joe Lynch's Mayhem. But uh, one of his earliest movies, though, was Wrong Turn Part Two, which is actually kind of regarded as like the best of the series because that's what turned into like the campy, over the top gore and stuff and really like funny characters. And I know Henry Rollins plays one of the characters in that, like Henry Rollins. Uh, Rollins is a, you know, punk hardcore legend uh, from uh, Black Flag. So like that is just like a weird mix. I've always been curious to see that one, but never got around to seeing this first one and kind of see why it's not really a movie I really enjoyed. But I'm actually after seeing it, though, I'm actually really excited to see what a remake does. I'm like, I hope it's well regarded and I'm actually really looking forward to it because this does feel very outdated. It's 17 years old. Like some people might be saying, why are you remaking a movie that's not that old? Like it's not that old because, you know, we were alive and stuff when the first one came out. Like it's so weird to like kind of be my parents age when they were saying, why are they remaking Total Recall and stuff? That movie's not that old and stuff. But, you know, it's nearly 20 years old when they remade that. So. I get it and stuff why they're remaking it like and this movie feels very like 90s even though it's early 2000s like so I'm excited to see what it does because there's so many extreme close ups bad camera work and stuff 40 year old actors playing teenagers in this movie um, but yeah why I didn't like it it's kind of just a rip off of the hills have eyes honestly. <laughs> I mean, that and tech is just a bad Texas chainsaw. I, I think you're more on the nail with Hills Have Eyes, but I mean, Hills Have Eyes is definitely still feels like Texas Chainsaw, where it's a psycho family. Uh, I don't know if they got into the fact that all three of these guys are like family members in this movie. They don't speak English. I that was what was frustrating me. Are they from another <laughs> fucking like world or something? Like, what are these people? Like, <laughs> are they like time travelers? Like they were stuck in a cave and came out and they're like still, I don't know. Like, why are they speaking another oh, language? Wait, wait, wait. 
Did you not see the the credits to this film? Like the the title credits to this movie? I did watch the opening credits and I know that they were like like I, I mean I don't think I was like paying one hundred percent attention, but I know that they were like mutants technically and stuff. The, the opening miss? title credit sequence is what pissed me off so much about this movie, and that's within the first couple minutes. Was just the movie it tells you all the backstory you need about the movie. It's like in the Appalachian Mountains, there are these mutant uh, like creatures that are attacking people, but they're like, right. I don't know if they, uh, honestly, I forgot the opening title credit sequence after watching the movie, but I just remember watching the title credit sequence and being pissed off. Cause I'm yeah. like, this is giving away the whole movie. Like, you know, <laughs> so much happens after that, but I'm like, this is giving away all the backstory and it tells you that they're, you know, these deformed abnor- abnormalities. I don't think they were like, the hills have eyes like where they were affected by like, you know, radiation poisoning. I think these people were just, you know, uh, like mutants that were, I don't know, from some, in, I think it was inbreeding. That's what it was. These are like inbred hillbilly mutants that are, you know, part of this family apparently that just kills people for fun, I guess. The cool thing is we do get the trapper, the, this, this movie, you know, uses the, the trapper meant a hillbilly Appalachian mutant kind of thing that you, you see in other horror media, like uh, the uh, video game Dead by Daylight has a character that's kind of like this. The movie, uh, cab- or uh, what is it? Uh, the, the cabin movie I'm thinking of. Um, cabin in the Woods. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I kept wanting to say Cabin Fever. It's obviously not what I'm trying to look for. Uh, Cabin in the Woods it takes a lot like it doesn't it might not necessarily take it from this movie because it takes it from these horror tropes so we see this film fall into the same exact horror tropes this old guy at the at the gas stop they also had the hill wild hillbillies in the Cabin in the Woods which are these same kinds of characters that they're fun tropes so it was cool to see a movie that followed these tropes exactly the same as you know the tropes are intended to be what I thought was hilarious was I know there's like seven wrong turn movies, right? So I just wanted to find out what happened in the rest of them or just get a synopsis from the rest of them. But this blew my mind because I wanted to see what you thought because I was calling bullshit as soon as I read it was the guy in the in the gas station that they you see at the beginning and end of this film. He's actually the father or grandfather of the three uh, trappers, the three mutant trappers. What? Like he was the youngest one of the four, <laughs> I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the later in the later sequels to this film, they make him an actual character, like not the second one, but I guess mm-hmm. like the third or fourth one. They make him a character who they recast as the same guy that played Hellraiser. Uh, I forget what that actor's okay. name is. Yeah. I think it's Doug, Doug something. But yeah, he plays that that same character, and he is actually the father of these uh, guy or grandfather of the of these three hillbilly characters. Which I just I don't know. I, I don't want to watch any of those. Can't teach them movies, English. Crack, also, yeah. like what the hell? I don't know why I'm so upset about that. But just like I'm triggered by like just like. All right, he spoke English. Why? Why are they speaking this weird gibberish stuff? Like, what happened? Like, uh, they have their own link. They have their own language. I, I understood that they had like their own language because I felt like there's probably more. Like, there's a whole civilization of these inbred mutant characters. They have there which, has to be for the sequels. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they do get into that in the sequels. I, I didn't. I read just the synopsis, so it wasn't like the full plot of every film, but. I, I, maybe I'll check some out later just because they're schlocky movies. But I feel like these movies don't even get like the credit that some of the other stuff that I like gets. I feel like people don't even talk about these wrong turn films. So they probably not even close to even getting kind of what I want from one of those movies, essentially. I get that, too. Like, I might have more fun with the sequels, like where they are a little bit more self-aware because this one is, you know, trying to be serious and stuff like uh, the original Hills Have Eyes is pretty schlocky and stuff and like over the top campy 70s horror fun exportation kind of style drive in movie. Wow, that was a lot of adjectives I just used. But I remember the remake. I think that movie came out in 2005. That was my first, you know, introduction to the Hills Have Eyes, the remake. And I really enjoyed that movie when it came out. Granted, I don't know if it holds up still, but I remember that was taken pretty somewhat serious. 
Um, and so it made sense to make that movie after the success of this movie, just because they're so similar in plot and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, like uh, what's it called? I might have a lot more fun with the sequels because Friday the 13th, you know, that's one of my favorite horror franchises, but I don't watch it because I think they're good. I watch them because they're over the top terrible and just really funny. And I actually can't stand the first one. That's the most serious one. And that's hailed as a classic, but that's the one I like never want to watch. Like I'd prefer to watch uh, parts three and up like, uh, you know, three through eight are my favorite ones, honestly. Yeah, it, it's funny because reading about all the trivia behind this film was just, I had me cackling. I was just dying thinking about how much of a pain in the butt this movie was to make because every time that they had something going on, it's almost like they had, took a wrong turn into a just horrible thing happening on set and in the production of this film. So essentially the main, I think it's the main guy, Desmond Harrington, he gets shot in the ankle throughout part of the movie, but then he also fell. Like remember when they're in that tree and he has to, he has to fall out. He broke, I think he, yeah, he broke his other ankle. And since it was already in the movie previously that he got shot in the left leg, his right ankle got broken, so they had to like fix every scene that he was in after that because he couldn't really walk. So that probably like explains the, the extreme close-ups. Like, oh, well, he can't move right now, so let's just add a lot of movement from his head and top uh, <laughs> half of his torso. <laughs> <laughs> it literally, that's literally what happened. He was limping the rest of the entire film, and that's why he's not really walking that much throughout the rest of the movie. That had me dying because I was just like, you could tell they were pissed. Like, dude, we had to pick his left leg because if we just picked his right re- leg, it would have made mm-hmm. sense, you know, because like, that's the ankle that he broke. But also uh, the, the actress, Emmanuel Cherki, uh, she dislocated her shoulder while performing that same fall from the trees. So just that fall from the trees, whoever his idea was it to come up with that, they didn't really like investigate at all, like how so many people are going to get injured in that exact scene because right. you can hear her shoulder pop in the production track of the sound yeah. mix. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. so funny. There's also a time where like, I guess a PA set like the cast up, like in this section that had like some weeds and, and whatnot, like for mm-hmm. them to rest in between takes. And then like pretty much all the cast was just sitting in poison Oak for like a day. Jeez, so like- everyone just, <laughs> workers rights are disregarded when it comes to horror films like it cracks me up and i love the dedication that we see from filmmakers and film sets and stuff but just like oh my gosh y'all you can kind of try better and stuff studios like you know give them the money that they need to be safe at least jesus yeah and i felt like wrong turn this film should be in that cursed films documentary if they come out for a season two (laughs) Yeah, just because of how like idea. bad they, these actors had it because it's clearly low budget but also like it just seemed like everything went wrong uh in this in the production of this movie to you know that you got this guy breaking his leg this girl dislocating her shoulder it popping uh they're sitting in poison ivy so the rest of the week isn't going to be fun when you're just itching the whole time you know like it's, that, that cracked me up i felt bad for these guys overall the film it feels like a dvd like direct to uh direct to dvd movie but it did come out in theaters if i remember correctly yeah it did i remember a lot of people in middle school were talking about it i would have been yeah i would have been about either 12 or 13 when this movie came out and uh like uh, i remember people talking about how gnarly and crazy and wild it was and stuff and how scary it was just because not a lot of movies were really like this back then and stuff i mean granted it generated a whole bunch of successful home videos i guess so i'm glad that it has a cool audience and i'm curious to at least watch the second one i somehow own that blu-ray for the second one uh, thanks to you i'm not <laughs> even sure if you've seen the second one but i know you just gave I, it I've to seen- me one day yeah yeah i've seen it i've seen it but yeah definitely you're gonna watch it on that great blu-ray quality i think it's i i'm pretty sure it's fun i don't know i'm a fan of joe lynch but i'm not gonna hedge you know my entire interest on him on that film alone 
Yeah. So yeah, there's overall there's like movies that like, you know, are products of their time and stuff. And this feels very 90s, even though it came out in 2003. So I'm actually excited to see like, like Cabin Fever, that movie feels very dated when you rewatch it and stuff. Like it seemed weird that it got a remake so recently, like, you know, it hasn't been that long and stuff like, yeah, it hasn't. But there's some movies that like Sleepaway Camp, that's one of my favorite movies, but I would love to see a remake of that just because it is very outdated and stuff. So there are certain movies that like, you know, maybe like the plot might still hold up and stuff like Jaws is a classic movie that'll always hold up. The CGI, yeah, of course, like it's maybe not be the best looking shark ever and stuff, but you know, like if like from a filmmaker standpoint, if you can redo it in better ways with modern technology, like I'm curious to see how it turns out and stuff. So. Yeah, I'm actually genuinely looking forward to seeing how the new remake of Wrong Turn comes out. Hoping for the best. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I hope that it's as interesting. But obviously, guys, you can check that out next week when we talk about that. Anyways, if you are interested in checking out this Wrong Turn, it's also available on Amazon. And you can check out the description box below to find that link and support the show. Yeah, after doing that, uh, come back here, leave a comment letting us know what you thought about the movie. Great way to help us out is by smashing that like button, so be sure to do that. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. Guys, we're available on all of your favorite social medias. Check us out on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and check out the description box below for all of those links. Anyways, guys, tune in next week for a brand new Never Have I Ever. Oh,